Hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us uh, today evening. We are all meeting for a very important uh, Aura Youth project. Um, Shirda will tell us more details about it. Uh, I just wanted to thank you all for taking out your time on this Sunday night and joining us. So over to Shirda. So I promised you that I will be sharing with you all the story of a rebel, a revolutionary. I would even say that he was a revolutionary of this century. And in a certain sense, he was a revolutionary of this entire age. That is the extent to which I will go. And he is somebody whose story is not known very well. It is not being spoken of in our textbooks. It's not being spoken of by our parents. It's not being spoken of by anybody whom we know. But it is almost as if this rebel has been forgotten by India for which he has worked all his life just to give a foundation for youth like you. <laughs> So that all of you can actually turn towards a beautiful, a bright future. But the story is so interesting, so captivating that I thought that we can have a special session just to let you know what he has done for our country and the new things that he has opened for all of us as a possibility. So. Um, let's dive deep into the story. Before I um, go into the story, can anybody tell me that in the last thousand years, which is the country which has been invaded by a foreign nation most number of times? Anybody who wants to speak can just unmute and then just <laughs> give the answer. If you know the answer, you can tell me or if you can only guess, well, you're most welcome to guess. Which country do you think has been invaded by people the most? Africa. Yeah. Africa. Can you tell me which country invaded Africa? Starting from England, obviously, sure. Britain. And Britain. any other country that comes to your mind? When I say invaded, they entered and then they conquered the country. Ah. Made them all subjects of the earth. Yes, India. Yeah. India. <laughs> well, that is a very timid India with a question, but that is because probably we don't know what has happened to India. So I just Googled, you know, what we normally do whenever we are in doubt, ask Google Dada and he will give us the answer. So here is what I came to know. This is a website who have done the research and then this is what they have come up with. So they say the exact answer is up for debate. But Foreigners have invaded the state of India over 200 times. Now, here is one country with every person who passes by comes into India and then like he gets a piece of the apple pie, which is India, and then goes away. Now, this seems to be the four. When did the invasion start? For India, the first one was Alexander. I, we say Alexander the Great. I don't know. Everybody says Alexander the Great. And I'm wondering... How do you call a person as great when he actually invades a country which is not his own and then wants to conquer it? For what reason? But what to do? This is way how our history identifies the people. He happens to be one of the first people. And uh, who were the last people to invade us? Make us almost thoroughly subjugated us to their uh, rule? Obviously, the British people. Now, I want to ask you a question. Can you call a nation as great when that nation has been a nation which is invader, invaded most number of times? It's an interesting question which each one of us, we have to ask. Some people will say that, oh, India is a great spiritual country. You know, the amount of spiritual knowledge which is available in India, it's not available anywhere else. And I'm almost tempted to ask if India is one of the greatest um, spiritual countries, 
and if india is simultaneously a country which is invaded most by foreigners there is only one equation which i see spirituality has made us one of the weakest nations possible how many would agree with me come feel free to share because you are the youth of india and probably this is a time to ask hardcore question has spirituality made us great or made us one of the weakest countries in the whole of earth who would like to tell me come come youth of india uh can i go yes sahana go ahead yes shuda uh, what i uh, feel is that spirituality has not made us weak uh it has definitely what i feel from the past is that I, it has helped us survive through all these 200 uh, invasions is what i feel uh, even today we live as indians or bharatiyas because of this uh, you know this our tendency to be inclined towards uh, spirituality is what my opinion now here is where i want to challenge you you said spirituality helped us to survive through all these invasions and dominations can you tell me at least a few incidences where the so called spiritual people have directly helped us to survive because all that i see is the spiritual people staying away from everything related to life they have their own ashrams it's almost like they have made a pact with the whole of india people of india we are not going to interfere in your everyday life whether britishers come french come portuguese come whether they well we are not going to help you to defend it we don't want to be part of your life well for us we have only one goal we are looking to achieve god and in order to achieve god well we have to give up everything bhagwan ko paane ke liye sab kuch kya karna padta hai now i'm sharing this with you with a lot of um you know deep sadness too because if this is a fact well we will have to look at it and then look at the thing fair and square if i look back in the last 1000 years i don't see many i can't even recall any just just before swami vivekananda came just to look at all the great spiritual luminaries have they ever defended our country from the foreign invasions from foreign ideas creeping in conquering them no the foreigners come with brute power and spirituality or the so called spiritual people have not been there to help now this is something that i want all of us to look at the facts of the history and if that is so we have to understand what happened to this spirituality well spirituality kind of isolated itself from our common life it survived did india survive did india's wealth survive because when the britishers left india do you know how many ships filled with gold and diamond and jewelries they took back the wealth of india can anybody make a guess you know one ship can carry actually tons of material that is what that is a magnitude we are talking about not one not 10 more than 100 ships left india carrying its wealth did any spiritual person kind of defended india no now um i'm looking at abhinav because abhinav will get some nice answers from abhinav so he says i would rather that asceticism and abject renunciation of matter has weakened rather than spirituality now it's a very interesting thing he seems to have some other definition of spirituality but one thing the way it was practiced through asceticism number 1 you know asceticism what does it mean well um, renouncing everything i don't belong to this country i don't don't belong to this society i don't belong to this um, community nation well this is renun- asceticism or renunciation of matter i am not interested in wealth i am not interested in riches richness i am not interested in family life well abhinav says very subtle distinction 
the way it was practiced through asceticism and renunciation of matter has weakened so we will come back to what abhinav means by spirituality but he says in few places nagas are those were part of the freedom struggle and in a certain sense he says can't say asceticism renounced bharata but if you look at the history the last 1000 years of history you know it's overwhelming one thing we can say that spirituality was not vigorously part of indian life now in in the sense that defending and then safeguarding it from the invasion of foreign ideas foreign concept foreign domination well at least this much we can be sure of now once we have this now it's up to us to draw the conclusion what i want to tell you is in the last 1000 years just remove the last you no know, before independence is what we are talking about we are a subjugated nation and very much in fact if you look at early 20th century that 1900 immediately afterwards <coughs> india was hitting a low in everything why the education that india has was devised by british it is supposed <coughs> to create clerks who are fit only to work for them and that was it so they had in fact tinkered with our syllabus what was the syllabus before the invasions came now it is something which all of us will have to listen to very carefully in our educational system of gurukula we had one ob- um, objective what was it well this is what all the indian texts which are of um, noteworthy significance of the early times said that all of us have a part in us which is nothing but pure greatness who are we may be man or woman young or old businessman or a beggar everybody we have a spark of greatness which is there inside every one of us and that spark is very individual and unique to me and to bring it out and express it is the goal of education to give that foundation now this was the goal of education in fact this was the goal of life even there is a certain greatness within me to bring it out is the goal of life and all the textbooks which used to indian textbooks which used to mention this were systematically removed from our educational system do you know which textbooks i am talking about well abhinav can say just like that can you quote any which were the old indian famous textbooks which have said just what i have shared now that there is a spark of greatness inside whoever we may be and to bring it out and then shine with it is the goal who would tell me come on which textbook of india am i talking about which used to talk about whatever name you want to call it well there is something of a genius inside to bring it out is what life is about come come exactly nikhil vedas upanishads gita now can you find these as part of your syllabus when you are going to do a course whether in the school or in the college or in the universities who is having these which are actually the man making just imagine a country where an educational system says that every one of us have greatness inside to bring it out is the aim just imagine if this were part of our education well we will be somewhere else so this is the time when all this were systematically removed from the indian consciousness and this was the time sri arabindo i have to tell you some of you may not know him was born in 1872 to a parent who is a very um great follower of the british people because he is highly impressed by the british people the way they used to conduct things the way they used to roam around with coated booted suited attire so he said that my son will have to grow up understanding only english manners he will have to walk and talk like an englishman because that is what i admire so what did he do from the beginning even though sherbindo was born in bengal his father didn't speak to him in bengali he said 
to his people at the household speak to him only in english but the child started growing and when the child became 7 years old he saw that you can he can't keep the child all the time in the house he has to send him for education where everybody is going to speak in bengali so he said i'm going to send my son to england you know the great city from where the great country from where all the great britishers have come so he sends his children not one but he had three children and all of them he sends with a note to the caretaker in england that please let them grow up by only exposing them to english uh, education and english manners nothing of india should reach but what was the result shri arabindo at that time he was simply arabindo ghos he excelled in all the subjects he took so much so that his principal came and said that i have never seen such a brilliant student in my entire career he mastered all their language english french uh, greek latin and a few other european languages he has completely grasped the entire western culture and western history too and with all this but completely ignorant of india and at the last few couple of years he who has grown up is almost reached to 20 years when he was in england he turns his eyes towards india and then feels this is my mother country i have grown up without knowing anything and then what happens a magical transformation has already happened with his father who now says that he has already started seeing the atrocities committed by the british and then he has already turned against the british but it is too late he has already sent his sons to england so he sends his sons the paper clippings of all the things with the britishers are actually doing to his son so that when the son comes back he at least knows what is the condition in india and then at 22 years sherbindo comes from the west very well educated one of the best students that the west has seen and he comes after having mastered all the languages of the west their history their culture he comes when he lands in india what he sees is something which touches his heart so deeply that he is looking at the country and says why are we people actually allowing the british as a rule and then for the next 12 years after coming to india he spends 12 years in going through the sum of the core textbooks which actually shaped india in the past he goes through vedas and upanishads and gita in his own way and in an indian culture and after he has gone to a great extent suddenly he says why are we allowing ourselves to be you know overpowered by the britishers and then out of his genius he gives a four fold program for the entire country to wake up and this is what i wanted to tell you all of you know that whenever we talk about india getting freedom from the british who is the one person who comes to your mind the father of our nation mahatma gandhi <clears throat> mahatma gandhi so the moment we say that who is the main person who asked britishers to go out of india who was talking about swaraj that india has to be ruled by indian mahatma gandhi's name is what comes to my mind but do you know any of you what is the year in which gandhi ji came back to india just as shrevindo came back to india gandhi ji after his education goes to south africa as an advocate and then he comes back after that he starts participating in indian politics who can tell me the year in which gandhi ji came back 1915 1915 gauss excellent but the concept of swaraj 10 years before 1915 in 1906 that was the time sherbindo comes up with a four point program the first one is actually he is the one of the first to demand swaraj self in ruling to the british government in fact he called it as purna swaraj complete independence he looked at the british and said that india has to be ruled by indians not anybody from outside but then he knew they are not going to listen to it probably 
So he turned towards his countrymen and then told them, if we want Swaraj, we need to do two things. What was the thing? First one, Swadeshi. Promote Indianness in production of all the goods. Ensure that they are of quality product. But that is not sufficient because the Britishers had a knack of earning money from India. What they used to do is simple. One example is the cotton, the dresses. So they will make Indian bond laborers to generate the raw material cotton. They will take it to Britain. They will turn it into nice kapda and then they will import it back to India. And only these clothes were allowed to be purchased by Indians. So the Indians not only produced the raw goods, they also gave money to the British so that now this is one of the ways in which they wanted to make money out of India. So Sri Aurobindo said, boycott all foreign goods. None of the British goods should be actually purchased by us. We think it was Gandhiji who has brought it, but 10 years before him, he said, Swadeshi and boycott. Point number two and point number three, this is what we want. And then finally, he said, the education that is given by the British is almost, he said, it is not worth anything because he has seen the education that they have for themselves that is nothing compared to our education is nothing compared to what they give and therefore he said we want an indian education which will train the mind and heart of the people not that they have to learn physics chemistry biology mathematics and they will go and work for a corporate uh, industry created by the britishers and earn money these people should become capable and creative and this is what he wanted. And this is the national education part, which he said. But more interesting is what I wanted to share with you. You know, India in the last thousand years was what it was. One of the reasons is spirituality not coming to its aid. So I want to tell you that beautiful story because side by side, Sherbindo was actually opening up to spirituality too. What did he do? Well, it was around 1904. What happened is very interesting. His brother fell ill, a very severe illness, and he is almost about to die. And that was the time when somebody in the family brings a Naga Sanyasi. So you see, somebody just had a um, mention of Naga Sanyasi. So this Sanyasi comes, what does he do? He looks at this person, Sherbindo's brother, his name is Barin. And then he picks up a tumbler of water in the water, he makes a symbol, he chants a mantra and then gives it to Barin. He says, come on, drink. Barin drinks. What happens? Suddenly, the next morning, he wakes up completely cured. Sherbindo looks at it firsthand. He said, wow, the, the power of spirituality is this much is not known to me. I want this power in order to free my country. Now, this is what Sherbindo... Then he started by himself. He started the practice of yoga, but four years he did it by himself, couldn't achieve much. But in 1908, there was one um, Maharashtrian yogi who happens, he happens to meet him. And then he requests this Maharashtrian yogi, can you please tell me that yoga, which gives you the maximum realization? I've been doing something on my own. I have some results, but I'm not satisfied with it. So this yogi gives him a technique to completely silence his mind. Now, just imagine the difficulty. Shrebindo had one of the most powerful, active, brilliant mind. And the yogi says, well, you have to make it completely silent. Now, Shrebindo didn't question him. Well, if this will give me the greatest yogic realization, the greatest spiritual power, I will do it. In three days time, he sits, he practices what this yogi has taught him. In three days time, his mind becomes completely silent. Do you know what we call this saint in India? Anybody? Complete silence. There's not even a single thought. Samadhi or? Well, one of the words is Nirvana. Nirvana means everything has been extinguished. No thoughts, no feelings, no emotion, nothing. Absolute silence. 
Now, this is the, the problem is not as simple as that. Shrebindo, so much into political action, he has to deliver a talk in three days' time to a great sabha. Now, the problem is, he's a great intellect. He could have delivered a lecture just like that, but his mind has suddenly become blank. So, he looks at this yogi, whose name is Vishnu Bhaskarelli. He says, my mind has gone blank. Not a single thought is coming to me. What am I going to do in this sabha? for my speech. And then the yogi says, don't worry, you go to this sabha, stand in front of them, do a namaskar, and something from beyond the silence will speak. Now Sri goes, stands in front of everybody, bows down, and then suddenly finds that there is a voice which begins to speak through him beyond his mind. And suddenly, that was one of the greatest discoveries, so significant even for us, that there is a source beyond us. Only thing we can contact it only when we have silenced our mind, because otherwise the mind keeps jumping about. It messes with that action which comes from beyond. And Shirobindo finds a new source for action. What happens? From that moment, all the thing he did was so beautiful, so brilliant. No, the British has actually got rattled. One of the viceroys said that this, the way this person inspires everybody, I think the British government will collapse in no time. And then he tells the British government, he is the most dangerous man that we have to reckon with. Somehow we have to put him in jail. So actually they put him in jail also by a false case. What happens in the jail? But in the jail, Sherbindo continues his yoga and then he begins, he ends up having an experience where he meets with the divine behind everything. With How does it happen? Well, it's, it's, it's one of the most brilliant experiences. He looks at the bars in, of the jail room and then he can sense the presence of a great spiritual power behind it. He called it as Vasudeva. He looks at all the other people who are supposed to be criminals in the jail. And he looks that in their hearts, he can see this great spiritual power inside every one of them. There was a case going on because of which he was put in jail. So he goes to the courtroom. He looks at the magistrate and he sees this divine power sitting inside him. And all that he sees is the divine power, which is there in the heart of everybody. Only people have just neglected it. And when he looks at it, he gets the message that in order to awaken this divine power is one of his mission. So he gets this message when he was in jail. And as he came to know, he's not saying in the jail, Britishers could not um, convict him. So he's acquitted. The moment he steps out, then he tells the whole of India, one message, he says, which I got from the jail, which is there is a greatness in all Indians and it is to awaken this greatness that we want freedom. Now, I want this to sink in to everybody that this is the message which with Sri Aurobindo stepped out that there is a greatness, there is a presence of the divine within all of us. It is only by bringing out that each one of us can be great. It is only by each one of us becoming great can India become great. Now you are asking, what is this power which is hidden, which Sri Aurobindo found out? Just to give you one sample of this power. Well, Sri Aurobindo, after giving this message to enter India, he gets a message from inside his heart, from the divine presence. Go to Pondicherry and I have a bigger work for you. What is that bigger work? Well, now we are going to work not only for India, but for the entire humanity. You have to take this message to the entire humanity that each one of us have something profound within us. Our mission in life is to give expression to this profoundness within. So after coming to Pondicherry, four years time, he picks up the pen and starts writing a magazine, which gets published by him. And one more person whom we call as the mother. And this is a monthly magazine, by the way. 
and it is most interesting to note that this magazine through this magazine he starts writing eight books simultaneously now this is not even a normal guinness record i would say it's a mega guinness record because the type of books he was writing each one of them is so profound containing so much knowledge which he has received from this divine presence just imagine i don't know whether you have heard of it some of the books like life divine has more than 1000 pages synthesis of yoga is again of that page essays on the gita is again he practically looks at the entire indian spiritual knowledge and then brings it out in a way which everybody can understand just imagine eight books he later he describes the knowledge was pouring through me from that source and i just have to pick up the pen and write it and this is what actually called what was the message coming through clearly through all the eight books that he wrote the message is what i have given here all life is part of the yoga what does he mean yoga joining with that great inner presence within which makes each, each one of us great now this is it now this story is something that we wanted to share with everybody who is a youth in india everybody who is a lover of india this message of shri bindo that there is a greatness inside every one of us and through a yoga which unites us with that power we can bring out that greatness and that is why we are all of us are born already with a mission and if each one of us even a few of us can discover this greatness and express it the entire india will be a superpower we will be a great and this is a story which is not shared in your history books it is not told to us but by our parents nobody actually even speaks about it and this sherbindo himself says that what he has done for india and humanity well you are not going to find it in the record of history books and he says beautifully he says history is seldom records things that were decisive but took place behind the veil sherbindo was one such power which happened behind the veil we want to bring him in front of the veil and we want to do it through an animation film i'm going to take just 5 more minutes to tell you about this beautiful project that aura youth has taken up and it is one of the major projects of shri arbindo society because the coming year the happening year is actually the 150th year leading to 150th year of shri arbindo's birth so what is great about this film first of all it's the first ever animation film made made on sherbindo's life what is animation film there are two types of animation film one is the cartoon type like kung fu panda finding nemo and i don't know what are the latest animation films frozen something these are all you know cartoon the caricature but we wanted it to be an animation film where every frame will be sketched by artists of high caliber now that is a beautiful thing only one, a few films like that have come out from the bollywood one of them is loving vincent vincent van gogh one of the great um painters artists of uh, an era all his followers got together and they started painting frames literally thousands of frames were painted and then digitized and they brought it together to make it into a film here we wanted a combination so we have a group of artists who started painting every frame of the movie on a digital board and just imagine the quality of the output we have a film which where every frame is made up of artists now only thing is every second will need 15 frames 15 sketches 15 drawings to form one second and we wanted this film to be of 20 minute because we know that is the attention span of many youth so to say so how many drawings do we have to make if it is for 20 minutes come on who can give me the final figure pick up your pen 15 frames for one second how many frames for 20 minutes 
Remember, a group of high caliber artists are going to produce 18,000 beautifully produced film and brought together into a movie. And in order to arrive at the art style, we did a lot of research of all the 20th century great painters. We developed our own artistic style. And then what about the technicians? Well, we wanted them to be best of the best. We contacted one leading animation studio in India who have already got two national awards and several international awards. Its name is Studio Ixaurus. And then we got the music director, Shri Sriram, who is very popular in the circle. But the more beautiful thing is the sound mixing is done by Resul Pukuti. How many of you have seen the Slumdog Millionaire? Just click on the button. Now, Desul Pukuti was a sound mixing uh, the guy who won an Oscar award. And fortunately, Mother's Grace, we got him to do the sound mixing for our film too. And then we wanted to show symbolically of what has happened in the trailer. So we decided to come up with a trailer and then we wanted to raise money for producing 18,000 frames. How much money do we need? Well, money cannot be a restriction for making a film like this. A film which every Indian should see, but still the money needed was two crores for all those artists and the musicians and the technicians. We said that somehow we will gather this money, generate this money, because we wanted to do this film. I'm going to show you the beautiful way in which this art is made. You know, can you see how they are making the sketches? So they have this digital board, digital screen, and in the digital screen, well, <laughs> they are sketching. What you see on the right side is, well, we have a few photographs of Sherabindo, which we gave to the artist. Every frame was done. See, in one second, if Sherbindo turns his head, it's going to be, frames are going to be like this. This is frame one, frame two, frame three, frame four, frame five. Everything has to be sketched. Now, this is what you are going to see. Now, in that 18,000 frames, every frame has six layers. How does it happen? This is how they go about. First, the movement is captured by some you know, rough strokes. Second one on the right side, somebody completes the line sketch. And then third one, the third artist fills up the colors. And then you come down left side. A fourth artist comes about the light effect because there'll be shadow and there'll be light. So he fixes the light, what time of the day, how the light should fall, he adds it. And the fifth artist adds the surrounding sketch and the sixth artist completes the sketch. Just imagine one frame has six layers. And like that, 18,000. We said if a movie has to be made for Sherabindo, it has to be of this. And we entered into the scoreboarding. And finally, we launched the trailer on 15th of August. And what you are seeing is the trailer is available for all of you to see. And the website where we have put up all the details is called anewdawn.in. I wanted to know whether all of you have known this trailer release and seen it. If you have seen it, can you please raise your hand? All right. I can see two, four, six people have seen. The others have not seen. But from what I have explained to you, well, more number of people are seeing. Seven, eight people out of our uh, group has seen it. Now, this is the trailer, which I'm inviting all of you to take a look at the trailer, be inspired, and be part of the movement through which we take this story to Indians. And this is an open invitation to every one of you let us all gather together and then contribute our best in whatever way possible to make this film happen. And I think India needs this film. 
and it's high time that you did it. How can you be part of this movement to take Sri Aurobindo to the masses? Here is somebody who said, don't take away spirituality from life. I, he himself is used to spirituality for politics, for curing his brother's disease. In fact, that spirituality should be a part of our life. So this is not just a film, but a movement to bring back this neglected part of history. Every Indian, anybody who loves India should know this message of Sri Aurobindo. Second one, he gave the message of true spirituality, which embraces life, not renounces life. It dynamizes life and not impoverishes life. It brings out the genius from within us. It doesn't make us, you know, people who are so limited, who think that, oh, I am a poor Monish, I am a poor Nikhil, I am a poor Shivakumar, I am a poor Sahana. No, that is only the surface coating. But every one of us has a genius sitting within and we are meant to bring out. Spirituality is bringing out this, which is already there in sin. And also, because for making the movie, we also need money and therefore contribute in whatever way you can. But with the spirit, with that aspiration that we are going to make this film happen. What has happened so far? Well, we have released the trailer and so far devotees who felt inspired, well, they have started already giving money, whatever they can. And we have already collected 30 lakhs out of the two crores that we need. But this 30 lakhs has come up with good wishes and love, which cannot be measured. Unlimited good wishes and love, and it is still growing. So, Two things probably we can. One, definitely, definitely watch this trailer, which you have already seen. Please note it down, anewdawn.in. Just have to go there. Stay, trailer will be there. Click watch it and then see how you can contribute. And you remember, it is not just that, but we have to gather together all of our resources and to make this happen. I'm going to invite our Rahul, who, by the way, is one of the person who gave the first spark for this project. You know, we were all, some of us were just discussing it together. And then he said, Dada, why don't we make a film on Sri Aurobindo? I said, how can we make, because we don't have paisa in our pocket. Well, we don't have the technical expertise. What are you talking about? But the moment he said, I could feel that there is something behind it. We created a team and the team is very, very small now. And I'm hoping that after this, some of you can really become part of the extension of the team. And how do we go about it? Now we know what it is. What are we supposed to do? I'm requesting... Rahul to take over. Thank you, Shivda. So, uh, the idea for the animation film, well, I was just very restless and very impatient. I just wanted the story of Shiorubinda and the mother to be told to the world. And um, that is where this idea started. And we decided, okay, let's start with this uh, part of Shiorubinda's life. So we have started with this, but I see this as a as a first step. And I strongly believe that when this movie will be released next year, uh, a kind of momentum will be built. And um, yeah, I don't know what will happen, but whatever will happen will be really good. And when we started this off, I don't know, I, I had no doubts about the money coming in, etc. I just knew that this will happen. Uh, so, yes, as we, um, I think some of us have not seen the trailer, uh, can we take out a few minutes right now and see the trailer and make whatever contribution we can individually? Um, the amount of money does not matter. It could be a few hundred rupees, 500, whatever we can contribute, um, given our capacities. What is important is the attitude with which we contribute. 
uh can we make the contribution with the attitude that or with the power that um, made bring in more contributions made multiply the um the force of wealth coming in so i have shared the link to the website i'll paste it again in the chat window if you just click on it it will take you to the home page where the trailer is uh for those of you who have not seen the trailer you can watch the trailer i'm also sharing the link through which you can make the contribution so for those of you who would want to do that right away i would request you to kindly do it so we can wait here for a few minutes so we will wait for 3 minutes that is the time it takes you to go there 2 and 1/2 minutes is the trailer watch it i'm going to mute myself if you can watch it in as big a monitor as possible because it has come out beautifully it's an amazing trailer and in exactly 3 minutes if you can after you have watched it you can come back and unmute yourself while we will have a quick chat as if you can use earphones the time starts now please go and watch this trailer i think nikhil also wanted to share something Good. Yeah, I I would take just like sixty seconds. So uh, really, thank you everyone for whoever is joined. I have just one request. Like already, Rahul and Shivda have shared about it. That yes, we need monetary support because there are a lot of artists and lot of hard work that they have put behind this. And after a point, even Mother has said that money will find its way. It's not like money will come. So you don't worry too much about the money part. you do your part and uh, i would request everyone there are multiple ways how you can support it you have a uh, speech you can speak so you can share your word with others you have fingers thumbs you can type and forward the messages to it is a good thing okay we are using internet for so many things why not for a good cause and we have our psychic being our insight self our heart center we can also pray and when we sit for one or two minutes we can pray for the project to be successful and it to manifest itself in many beautiful ways so as a youth of india let's try to have that aspiration and give our best don't use too much of your mental mind like oh there will be more work oh there will be this thing that thing it's okay it will be taken care use a little bit of uh, inner instincts your aspiration to like yes let's do this together thank you thank you so much everyone that you came sachin you wanted to say something audio yeah, is- i wanted to say about the uh, trailer i just watched that um i got a question actually uh, when uh, you know that uh, arvind arvindo saw all these things people getting punishment yes. from british and all that but after a 1 uh, minute or uh, 30 second there is a like totally it got change and it's like a it became uh, reverse opposite <laughs> yeah it's it's became uh, opposite so how that shifts happens uh, ah. that's really interesting so no, this is called it's a new genre it's called symbolic realism Oh, we are using a symbol to show you a future reality so what happens is when shrivindo lands on it it was not that he was physically seeing everything in the bombay port he landed in bombay apollo bandar no that was happening all over india symbolically shown as if shrivindo saying okay this is what is happening to india and this is india poor india and then he puts one step and the real india welcomes him not the india that you see that is only a part the real india welcomes him with a spiritual experience and then we know that shrivindo has arrived the future will change and therefore what we show is the future which is being shown even hindu musliman you know yeah, yeah, yeah. get together yeah, symbolic uh, yeah even india is like an elephant which small human being has uh, subjugated the elephant the elephant comes and says that i am an elephant come on and it doesn't kick back at the mahot pyar se you know it takes him and he says this is your place and then you be in your place 
that is the indian elephant waking up and that happened the moment sri aurobindo arrived that assurance that everything will be all right eventually was given so that we call it as symbolic realism yeah i think we can conclude now with okay. a minute of silence yeah. come let us all get together but remember and make it a promise that you will take it at least to 10 people around you and then those 10 people make them a request that they have to share it with 10 people the person who fails it well we are just giving them an opportunity to be part of this movement but all of us let us pull ourselves together and come with a minute of silence let's invoke the mother's grace thank you so much everyone and i'm hoping to actually hear back from each one of you that once you have shared it with 10 people just drop in a message and tell all your friends cut down on one pizza in the next one month and then put your money we don't want more but we don't want less also that's it and then let's pull us the money the youth if they contribute i will be happy you know a lakh pati giving a lakh is one thing but the youth giving something out of himself it's more precious to us than anybody else thank you so much for being part of this aspiration